here, man. Wild card weekend. Vikings at the Saints at the NOLA. It's going to be a wild one. We'll go ahead and break down the matchup between the two teams, how the Vikings can possibly pull off the upset this wild card weekend. We'll start with the Vikings offense versus the Saints defense. And the saying goes in the sport of football that the game starts and ends in the trenches. And certainly on Sunday, that will be the case because the Vikings offensive line, they're going to have no choice but the man to fuck up because the Saints defensive line is really, really good. Mario Edwards, Malcolm Brown, they've got their superstar Cam Jordan. However, the one favorable matchup on that defensive line, believe it or not, compared to the Vikings offensive line, or at least one, one area where the Vikings offensive line could have some success, believe it or not, is Cam Jordan versus Brian O'Neill because if Cam Jordan were to play right end and match up against the Vikings left tackle, Riley Reef, bro, Cam Jordan would wreak nonstop havoc all game long. But when you're talking about Cam Jordan, one of the best pass rushers in the league, going up against one of the best right tackles in the league in Brian O'Neill, that could be a tough matchup for Cam Jordan to where he could slow him down, maybe even possibly eliminate him altogether. And maybe Saints fans, you could tell me this because I've always wondered this as an aside. Cam Jordan is your best pass rusher. So I've never understood why he plays left end. I would figure that he would have more of an impact playing right end going up against left tackles, going up against quarterbacks on their blind side. But that's just me. Maybe you guys can let me know your thoughts in the comments section of this video. But Demario Davis, he's a hell of a linebacker. When you consider the Saints front seven, they're so dominant and so physical, which is why they're one of the best defenses against the run, which is really important because the run game is very crucial for the Vikings to have success on offense. And if the Vikings offensive line can do just enough to hold their own to get Dalvin Cook to the line of scrimmage, then the run game has a chance to be successful. If not, if he's getting tackled in the backfield nonstop along with Alexander Madison, then it's curtains. And while the run defense is great for New Orleans, the pass defense, that's where the opportunity lies. So you need the run game to be effective in order to sell the play action, the bootleg passes. Because if you can sell the defensive line, the front seven of the Saints in one direction and move the ball in the complete opposite way, that's how you're going to get those big time chunk plays in the passing game. And lastly, you have to get Adam Thielen involved in the passing game because he's been virtually invisible the last month or so since he's returned from injury. And now we get to the Saints offense where the Saints, they have a very strong offensive line, which for me, I'm going to need the two defensive tackles for the Vikings to play better. Linval Joseph and Shamar Stephan, they have to play better. You have to be able to get pressure up front on the Saints offense. The Saints offensive line, I like their power formation when they add in their fullback, Zach Line. And Alvin Kamara, he's been okay, not great, but the balance of Latavius Murray has made up for that. And the true X factor for the Saints in this game is Jared Cook because I'm telling you right now, the last month and a half, he's played like one of the best tight ends in the league. He's been that damn good. And Taysom Hill is the ultimate gadget player in the National Football League, which... If you're an opposing defensive coordinator and you're game planning against the Saints, watching Taysom Hill suddenly trot out onto the football field has to be frustrating because you don't know how the Saints are going to use him for that particular play. He can line up as a quarterback for RPOs or wildcat formations. He can take the ball himself. He can line up as a receiver because he can legit run routes down the field and catch the football. This year, he's catching 85% of his targets. He can do end-around runs. He can line up in the backfield as a running back. Or worst-case scenario, he can drop back in the pocket and make passes down the field. So you really got to be wary of Taysom Hill. And then we get to Michael Thomas, who I respect Lamar Jackson. He's proven me to be wrong as hell. I had questions about him coming from Louisville. I had questions about him being a quarterback at the next level. He belongs in this league as a quarterback. There's no doubt about that. I respect what Lamar Jackson has done this year. But for me, dude, Michael Thomas is the MVP of the league. When you consider everything he's done this year, he's the record holder for most catches in a single season. And what Michael Thomas was able to do while Teddy Bridgewater filled in for Drew Brees in five starts, they still went undefeated. Large part of that 
goes to Michael Thomas. The impact that he's had on the Saints and their ability to still win games regardless of quarterback at the wide receiver position. The position, the one position in the NFL that's widely recognized as the most dependent of other teammates around him. To me, Michael Thomas, he's the MVP. To me, he's the new Megatron, straight up. And because of the amount of playmakers that they have on offense, it forces the opposing defenses to spread out. And with that said, although that's dangerous, you have no choice but to double-team MT13. So whatever cornerback that you have on Michael Thomas, you need to have a safety, either Anthony Harris or Harrison Smith. I don't think, I don't think it matters either way. They're both quality safeties. I would probably lean towards Anthony Harris, but either way, it's fine. So you need to double-team Michael Thomas. And whatever safety is not double-teaming Michael Thomas, unless the ball is going to MT13, you have to be laser sharp to recognize that, okay, I am the last line of defense for this Vikings defense to prevent any big-time plays from happening. On Taysom Hill packages, I would have Mackenzie Alexander or J. Ron Curse line up on number seven. And for the base defense, the 4-3, when you're not running the nickel packages, I think it would suit the Vikings better to have J. Ron Curse as the third linebacker opposed to a more traditional linebacker in Eric Wilson. That way, you can have J. Ron Curse line up on Jared Cook. And I like Eric Hendricks, and Mike Zimmer said he expects Eric Hendricks to be healthy enough to play in the playoffs. We'll see because he's always been hot air when talking about injuries. Oh, this player's going to be great, and then they end up not playing at all. But if you have a linebacker line up on Jared Cook, I just think that's going to be a mismatch every single time. I think that gives the Vikings the best chance to win. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Do you think the Vikings are going to win or lose? What is your final score? I'm not making a prediction for this game. I just laid out the formula. Whether they win or lose, we'll see. So we do this three times a week. Mediocre at Best Sports Podcast with Realistic Randy. Check me on Twitter at Realistic underscore Randy. Facebook at Realistic Randy. The next podcast will be on Monday reacting to the outcome of Vikings versus Saints. Wild card weekend, baby. Are you going to stay alive or are you going to go home, Minnesota Vikings? We'll see you then. We'll be right back.